Trump is under fire for his Pocahontas remarks. North Korea files, files and fires another missile, and a set of Oklahoma twins are behind bars. This is OU Nightly. President Donald Trump at a White House event honoring Navajo code talkers referred to Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren as Pocahontas. This is a nickname he has publicly labeled the Oklahoma-born Democrat for a long time. You were here long before any of us were here, although we have a representative in Congress, who they say was here a long time ago, they call her Pocahontas. The culturally, culturally incentive remark may have been lost on those in the Oval Office, but not for members of OU Native community. It's very ironic that he made this joke, took the took an opportunity that was supposed to honor Navajo code talkers, and used it as an opportunity to get, you know, to have another uh, joke at Elizabeth Warren, and he did so underneath a portrait of Andrew Jackson, which he is, you know, known as he's referred to as an Indian killer among all people of Indian country, among all tribes. The National Congress of American Indians has condemned Trump's use of Pocahontas to degrade Warren. Anik Zoha joins us in News Center with the latest on the North Korea missile. Anik, what can you tell us? Thanks, Ashley. South Korean military officials confirmed that North Korea fired a ballistic missile early Wednesday morning local time. This makes 22 missiles North Korea has launched since February, an alarming number to say the least. U.S. officials also confirmed the launch, and President Trump was notified while the missile was in the air. He told reporters late this afternoon, we will take care of it, but offered no further details. And in a related development, Hawaii will begin testing its nuclear warning sirens in response to these growing tensions. The sirens have not been tested since the end of the Cold War. And today, the Senate Budget Committee passed the GOP tax reform bill, and now it's headed to the full Senate. Democratic leaders Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi backed out of a meeting with the president after he tweeted about them this morning. With his tweet this morning, President Trump made sure that today's meeting is nothing but a photo op. These issues are far too serious for these games. Republican leaders hope to vote on the tax overhaul package by the end of this week. And after stepping down as a top Democrat on the House Judiciary Committee on Sunday, Congressman John Conyers has been accused yet again for sexual harassment by a former aide. Conyers says he will not resign, maintains his claim of innocence, and plans to fight the allegations. And Ashley looks like the pressure is now on Conyers as yet another sexual harassment sandal emerges from Washington. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Anik. Two sisters from Choctaw, Oklahoma will serve prison time after pleading guilty to conspiracy today. 47-year-old identical twins Bertie and Becky Jo Hoax were sentenced for conspiring to steal U.S. postage stamps. A federal indictment alleges the sisters opened personal checking accounts at various banks and wrote dozens of bogus checks at Oklahoma post offices to obtain thousands of postage stamps. Bertie was sentenced to five years and Becky was sentenced to four. Both women will serve an additional three years of supervised release after their prison terms. They agreed to pay more than $60,000 in restitution, mostly to the U.S. Postal Service. Prosecutors say the sisters both have extensive criminal histories. Well, I'll tell you what, December is a couple days away, but it does not feel like that and outside at all. I think we're going to get some rain tonight as well. Andrew, what can you tell us about that? That's right, guys. We could get some rain tonight. In fact, here, taking a peek at our uh, national satellite and radar, we can see the center of this low pressure system that's going to move through the state tonight along with the cold front that's blown through you might have felt the wind shift if you've been outside and that's going to be our main source of precipitation and we really need it for most of Oklahoma around the rest of the state down here in the southwest they're in some pretty severe drought as you move closer to central Oklahoma you can see it goes to moderate and then abnormal and now pretty much out of it here for us and then more of it in the panhandle I'll let you know coming up later on if we're going to get some relief from this drought around here in eastern Oklahoma. Back to you, Reagan. Thanks, Andrew. A dog owner faces trial after his pit bulls fatally attacked an 82-year-old woman. 
Antoine Burks is charged with second-degree manslaughter after a judge made the ruling Monday in Oklahoma City that there was sufficient evidence for a trial. A witness testified that the woman, Cecile Short, was attacked after her small dog barked. Burks has, pled, has, has not pleaded guilty. An Oklahoma man, 58-year-old Anthony Joseph Palma, has been sentenced to life in prison without parole after being convicted of murder of an 8-year-old girl. Palma was convicted last month in connection to the 1997 disappearance and suspected death of Kirsten Renee Hatfield. Hatfield's body has never been found, but prosecutors allege Palma took Kirsten from her home after DNA testing connected him to blood found on the scene. Palma denies involvement in Kirsten's disappearance, though he lived near Hatfield. He does not plan on appealing his conviction. Still to come on OU Nightly, new technology is on the radar for meteorologists. Plus, coffee not only starts your day, but maybe even starts a bus. Welcome back. A proposal calling for a temporary city income tax to fund teacher pay increase has fallen short of signatures. The proposal received 9,090 valid signatures, but needed about 3,000 more signatures to qualify the proposal for a citywide vote. The tax would sunset in four years and people living near or below the poverty line would be exempt. The initiative drive came after lawmakers failed to fund teacher pay increases in the special legislative session. And now Olivia Whitehead joins us in Tech Report with the latest on the FCC's plan for net neutrality. Olivia? Net neutrality could be seeing its final days. Last week, the FCC unveiled its plan to end net neutrality, which currently mandates that online content is treated equally by Internet providers. The proposal seeks to end this provision much to the disdain of tech giants Facebook, Google, and Amazon. FCC Chairman Ajit Pai says this will help end micromanagement of the Internet. But a counter argument put forth by Internet Association CEO Michael Beckerman says this proposal undoes nearly two decades of bipartisan agreement on baseline net neutrality principles that protect Americans' ability to access the entire Internet. The FCC will vote on the repeal at its monthly hearing December 14th. And the Research Innovations Lab at the National Weather Center is currently researching how multifunction phased array radar will help meteorologists. OU Knightley's Jaron Spohr has more. The Research Innovations Lab houses many different radars. One of the radars, the Multifunction Phased Array Radar, hopes to help meteorologists better determine the severity of a storm. It does that by combining two radars. And it's a, a concept of the next generation uh, weather radar and aircraft surveillance radar. So right now in the United States, aircraft are tracked by radars that are operated by the FAA and the weather is surveilled by the National Weather Service through NextRed radars. So there are two totally different types of radars, and the idea is to try to combine those missions. A lot of critical pieces go into making a radar, but what exactly does Dr. Palmer and his team do? We work on how the radars would operate, their basic design. We're designing and fabricating prototype uh, radar systems and then testing those systems to see if they'll meet the performance requirements. Once everything is up and running, the radar is mounted on a truck and ready for use. Jaron Spohr, OU Nightly. An independent study estimates implementation of a combined NPAR network of radars satisfying both FAA and NWS missions will save the taxpayer $4.8 billion over the life cycle of the radar. And people aren't the only things powered by coffee these days. New British startup BioBean has partnered with the Shell in order to turn coffee grounds into a fuel source. Oil from used coffee is transported to the recycling facilities where it is blended to make B20 biofuel, which can be used in diesel buses. The pilot project currently has 6,000 liters of oil, which can be used by one bus for a year. So with the amount of coffee that people are drinking, I'm thinking that this could be a great substitute for gasoline in some buses. Who that knew? is impressive. Right? Who knew? I've always been they a coffee fan, but now new. I could fuel a vehicle. And not have to there use gas. That's there some you go. crazy Taking stuff. your coffee and enjoying it to get around too. <laughs> Something I like new every it. day, I tell yes. you what. Thanks, Olivia. <laughs> Thank you, Olivia. Yeah. Olivia. Well, a Tulsa high school is in hot water after failing to promptly report the sexual assault of a 16-year-old football player. The attack happened at the home of Bigsby School District Superintendent Kyle Woods. 
Bigsby High School administrators delayed reporting the attack for days, which is a misdemeanor in Oklahoma. The boy told investigators he was assaulted with a pool stick by a teammate, while three others held him down and a fifth person recorded it. And still ahead on OU Nightly, an OU coach is calling it quits after 14 seasons. Plus, Andrew will give us a look at our week ahead when it comes to the weather. That's right, guys. We could see some showers moving in this evening, but overall, we're looking at a very nice week ahead of us. Welcome back to OU Nightly, and this has been the scene for most of the day here in Norman. Very cloudy as that cold front is pushing its way through the state. I think we've got some birds up here on the top of our clock tower enjoying this cool weather. 67 degrees outside right now. Winds pretty calm out of the south southeast. Dew point at 54, so it's feeling relatively nice. And you can really see right here along this transition between the green and the orange where that cold front is really starting to be felt temperature wise. And we're going to see that move through as we go through the night, already getting a bit cooler up in Guymon. They'll be chilly overnight tonight. Now, for the rest of our evening here in Norman, around 8 o'clock is when we can expect to see some pop-up showers possibly moving through our area with the system. But really, the best chance for storms is going to be later into the evening, around 10 o'clock and after the midnight hour, a little bit earlier into your morning. But should be out of here by the time you wake up. Future rainfall in the state, not going to be a whole lot here in Norman. Two one hundredths of an inch, five one hundredths of an inch in Oklahoma City. Most of the rain is going to be up to our northeast around Muskogee and Tulsa, as well as Bartlesville. Southwestern Oklahoma, I'm sorry, not going to get too much help with that drought, but there will be some relief with the rain moving through. Tomorrow through the day, clouds are going to be sticking around early, but the rain should be gone. And as we move through the day, it's going to break up a little bit, but most of the clouds will stick around. It'll be mostly cloudy through your Wednesday tomorrow, 54 degrees at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. High, though, tomorrow, a little bit earlier, 56 here in Norman, 55 in Oklahoma City. And one thing that's really nice, we're going to have these northerly winds that are going to be feeling really well and nice here. And you can actually see right up here where this little circulation is. That's our low pressure system that's coming through to give us these cooler temperatures. As we take a look at the week ahead of us, showers early tomorrow. The clouds are going to stick around. They'll move out on Thursday, though. Saturday and Sunday, though, are going to be a very nice weekend for us here in Norman. And we could have another chance for some rain on Tuesday as we're going to have another front move through uh, around then Tuesday afternoon. So honestly, it's looking like a really nice. We've had some interesting weather yeah. this November. I'll tell you what. Really cool, warm, cool, warm, cool, it was a warm Thanksgiving. It was. And now it's going to be really cool warm. Thanksgiving. Warm. Yeah. And another warm so. weekend ahead. We no, could use some rain, though, so it's we okay. We could. No, it's been, it's been pretty dry, so I'm, yeah. I'm welcoming the rain. Thanks, Andrew. Sure. Absolutely. Thank you. Hey, Colin, I hear you are going out with a bang in the last installment of everyone's favorite segment. That's right, guys. We're taking a look back at our favorite top plays in the final edition of your favorite Top Play Tuesday. Now, I know the suspense is already killing you, but first we have to talk about the rematch in the Big 12 title game. I'll have more, so stick around. Sports is straight ahead. Welcome back. The Big 12 title game is set, and it has plenty of playoff implications. The rematch between Oklahoma and TCU is a win-and-you're-in situation for OU. And even though it was easy going for the Sooners last time around, it's a whole new ball game, especially with TCU expected to make adjustments. None of anything that happened in that game carries over. And uh, this is a, a new game. Uh, it'll be, a, it'll be a, a different atmosphere. Two teams know each other well, um, and it should be a hell of a fight. You know, playing a team twice is always hard. Uh, it's the second time you're, you're more prepared. Um, and it's just it's going to be a lot more challenging playing a, a team like TCU. As well coached as they are, they're going to be uh, very ready to, to play us. Tonight we will get our last sample of the college football playoff rankings before Selection Sunday. Last week it was Alabama at number one, with then Miami following them at two and Clemson at three, as we're going to show you here. Oklahoma would eventually then close out the top four, as you'll see here in a little bit, with then Wisconsin at five and Red Hot Auburn was at six. Now expect some changes tonight as Bama and Miami both lost. This should mean Clemson OU will jump up in the rankings. Some final Sooner news for you as head volleyball coach Santiago Restrepo has resigned. Athletic director Joe Castiglione said the search for a replacement will start immediately. The Baltimore Ravens have topped the Houston Texans on Monday Night Football. 
The Texans outdid the Ravens in basically every single statistical category except two major ones, rushing yards and turnovers, while capitalizing on these two areas. The Ravens were able to walk away with a 23-16 win. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I have some good news and some bad news. This will be my last time bringing you your favorite segment and my brainchild. The good news is it's not only time for Top Play Tuesday. We have a very special Top 5 countdown to close out the year and look back at our favorite plays. Let's laugh and cry together, everyone. Number 5 comes from the Chicago Bears with a very nifty little trick play here. Pitch it out and in for a two-point conversion. I'll say it once and I'll say it again. That right there is like a hot knife going through butter. Real smooth. Very nice play. Good call as well. All right, here we go with number four coming up here in a little bit as my man Bolu Olorun for me gets into the end zone with someone's shoulder. Once again, that reminds me of the song Lean On Me, but he's taking head and shoulders above the competition to a whole new level. Also, Olorun for me, great name for a running back. Props to the young man and all that athleticism. Number three here coming up from the Dallas Cowboys. Dak Prescott into the flat for Cole Beasley who catches that with his helmet? Is that for real? I mean, is that helmet hand coordination? I don't know what you call that. But that's pretty impressive. Props to my man Bees. What a snag. All right, here we go. Coming up with number two. My man Josh Jackson here with the Iowa Hawkeyes. Sealed the deal with this nasty one-handed snag of an interception. Man, he, my man's out there doing some yoga because that is a stretch. Look at this play. Oh, he's got some stick in his gloves. I know it. What a play. Had three picks on the day. Not a bad day for my man. All right. Finally, the top play in our countdown is the play that drove us all completely nuts. Take a look at this one. Yeah, hey, look at him go. The 20. Wes, he might do it. Wes, he's going to do it. Oh, my goodness, buddy, do it. Do it, do it. Touchdown. Oh, man, he's my favorite squirrel. Look at the little man go. Cheering him on, the little man's tired. Look at him heavy breathing. He, he needs some more nuts. He's got to carve up for that kind of exercise. But I love it, man. I, that's a great way to end our top play countdown in the last one of the semester. I'm not going to lie to you guys. It's hard for me to sign out, but that's it for Top Play Tuesday, and I'm not playing. Cheering up, buddy. I'm so gonna, sad. Gonna miss it. You can't top that. Very far. I don't miss your, your, your clever sayings, but clever. we are going to miss seeing which one's your favorite yeah. every week. Yeah, yeah. You get, you get very fun. hyped up. I had very The fun. squirrel one was probably my favorite, yep. but I thank think you, Colin. Yeah. Thank you, Colin. Well, still to come on Are You Nightly, I've got all the deets on the royal wedding, so stay with us. I'm Shiloh Sellers at the Update Desk. Federal Judge Timothy Kelly has ruled in favor of President Trump, declining an emergency restraining order to prevent the president from placing Mick Mulvaney as the acting director of the Commercial Financial Protection Bureau. The emergency stop came from Melinda English, the CFPB deputy director, after English was named successor when Richard Cottery resigned. Currently, both Mulvaney and English claim to be the rightful acting director. That's all for now. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Shiloh. As everyone has probably heard, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry are engaged, and I have some details on the big day. After Harry got down on one knee as the two were roasting a chicken and proposed with a self-designed ring, the planning has begun. The wedding will take place at St. George's Chapel in Windsor Castle, which was described as a very special place for the couple. And the month the magical ceremony will take place will be in May. They say the wedding will be a moment of fun and joy, and I don't see it going any differently. And now Harley Toothman joins us live on campus for a special holiday event. Harley? This year, as it's his last one. Wait, what am I doing? We're a couple of minutes out from OU's holiday annual tree lighting ceremony here at David A. Burr Park, east of the residence halls. Everyone is encouraged to join the celebration of the lighting of the menorah and the 20 foot Christmas tree. There will be holiday music and hot chocolate and hot apple cider brought to you by OU Housing and Food Services. Santa Claus and his elves will be here alongside OU Brass Symphony and remarks from President David L. Bourne himself will be the last tree holiday lighting ceremony of his presidency. It's a beautiful 67 degrees. Come out, grab a friend, grab a hot chocolate. This has been Harley Toothman reporting live at David A. Burr Park. Back to you in the studio. Thank you, Harley. Well, if anybody's ever wondering what a storm looks like on another planet, Andrew has the answer for that, doesn't I do, he? I do, absolutely. NASA has gotten some uh, new footage in from one of their satellites orbiting Jupiter. 
and there's a storm on Jupiter, and there's post-tropical storm Ophelia that we had earlier in this hurricane season, and I mean, you can see the circulations are rather similar, and two beautiful images from NASA satellites. That's awesome. Like, Very neat. Really crazy. Well, thank you for watching OU Nightly, brought to you by Gaylord College at the University of Oklahoma. We'll see you back here tomorrow night, live at 4.30. Have a great evening. Good night.